Oh yeah, Peak TV is back, baby. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's me, Odiro Kid. You back again with another video, and. Now that you've seen The Boys episodes 1, 2, and 3 of season 4, I'm assuming you've seen it because if you haven't, don't watch this video because we're going into a full spoiler discussion between all three episodes. And if you haven't watched The Boys, be sure to come back here after you've seen the episodes. And if not, and you stuck around for it, let's talk about The Boys. Okay, to recap last season, Homelander actually killed someone and everybody cheered for him. Butcher's on the time clock. And Victoria Newman is in position to the White House, which... That's not good, especially since she's a revealed soup. And in this season, in any way, I can just say this season, or should I guess the first three episodes, it's more in line to me that this show is diverting itself from what it originally was. Not in the sense of tone, but I'm talking about like the superhero parody genre or feeling of what it was because before seasons one two and three we actually had a motive where oh we're looking at these characters through them making fun of what we actually see about superheroes but these three episodes especially they make it feel like oh this is our world we're living in and this doesn't matter everything superhero jokey joke is done we're actually going to get to the real shit and actually talk about it like the very beginning when everybody was trying to figure out what's going on with victoria and actually try to put a hit on her right away and you see butcher shoot her in the back of the head and huey throws some acid in her face and nothing happens that show that she's basically more indestructible than what we thought i thought that most of these suits would just die with a bullet in their head or something like that but especially since you remember last season when Maeve punched homelander in the face and he bled and what was one of the only times he saw him bleed so that tells me weapons anything like that can't go up against soups and if you want to actually kill a soup it would actually be a soup against a soup there are some characters i want to get out the gate talking about but let's talk about the man himself homelander homelander from what we see in these th first three episodes He's more unhinged in this case where before looking at Homelander, I'm like, okay, so I'm going to love every scene you're in because you're just talking shit. You're not going to do anything to anybody. Yes, you get your word out there and you're the highest commander like Superman, but I know he's not going to do anything that bad, right? Blow A train. What? I'm not kidding. Go over there, pull out A train's cock and blow him. I mean, when that scene came on. Not gonna lie, part of me is like, is he really gonna go that low into making him do that? Oh, oh, he's gonna do it. Oh, okay, for what the show is, I didn't think it was gonna push it that far. Yeah, I know the deep doesn't suck his. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that. I know the deep doesn't do it, but in this case, it shows how much power and command Homelander has after these guys. Because remember how last episode of last season you saw him just kill Black Noir because. He lied to him and it was like, damn, he killed his own best friend that he actually cared for. And seeing the how the Deep and A-Train don't mean anything to him, they're just lackeys there to do his bidding. It shows that how much force and command Homelander has this season. And I feel like now that we're entering to the ending, because he did kind of say that season five is the ending of the show, we're going to see Homelander at his worst and especially how far he's going to go to get what he wants. Another standout I could talk about is Sister Sage because she's a new character brought into this season. I feel like, yes, I am read the comic, but I am not. I don't remember too much because it's been a while since I read it. I don't remember seeing her. If she's an original character made for the show, that's cool. But her story, or should I say, her character is what I'm impressed with. She's presented as the smartest man in the world, almost like Reed Richards. But the fact that she's just smart and knows every little thing about the Seven and how the industry works because she's like oh i know i just don't wear tights because i feel like that's just demeaning i feel like i don't have to talk to you because there's nothing you can do that would actually make me feel intimidated i'm like oh so she just doesn't give a shit and she just does whatever even the fact that she even took a picture with homelander just to get some approval because yeah nobody's gonna believe me if they just see me a black woman actually input of the seven which i know the industry is not gonna let me do that which it's funny when the show references something like this in a show like Star Wars, the Acolyte is doing the exact same thing that people are hating on, but people are loving this show because of it. I don't know. I find that little line parable. I like it. Even the team themselves are on their own separate journeys, but their own storylines are in line with their characters. And I feel like this is their final step to finality between their stories. Butcher has six months left and he's just dying he just feels like i have to get the job done this is our only chance if we're there to actually go for homeland or victoria 
this has to be it. I'm struggling with myself, trying to take care of Ryan, trying to convince him to be good. And I feel like this season, or in case a couple episodes more, I feel like my deviate from the coming, but I feel like I don't want to talk about that yet until we get into a later episode. So I'm going to say Butcher is on his last legs, and we're going to come back to him if they're going to actually explore what's going on with this character. Huey, I can say that, yeah, we have seen Huey go through so much, but I feel like this season in particular, there's not as much going on with Huey as compared to everybody else because he's just dealing with his dad in the hospital. His mom's come back into the fold after she clearly abandoned them early on, as it was mentioned. But that whole story, I like the fact that, yes, we're going to see Huey go through his own personal problems. And I feel like his dad is the one thing that he has holding him back because I know Huey is the soft spot. He's the good character on the show. Compared to everybody else, he's the softest character. And I feel like if they're going to do more with his dad, and I feel like, yes, they're going to have to find a way to put him back into the fold, actually get him within the boys seriously. But if his dad ends up dying this season, I'm like, damn, that's going to suck. The biggest standout I can talk about is actually Mother's Book because, yes, compared to other seasons, he has been more on the side of Butcher because I know before when they were a camaraderie that Butcher was the one in charge. Mother's Milk wanted to help, but then again, didn't want to help at the same time. But uh, compared to season two, when he actually took charge, when Butcher was out, he I liked him in that season because I'm like, damn, he's just a, a strong guy trying to do his thing, trying to be there for his family. Matter of fact, trying to get to his family. But in that scene where you see um, in season two, comparatively, when uh, Mother Smoke is actually holding everybody down, trying to get everybody to regroup, I'm not Butcher. I'm trying to do things my way. The same way he is in season four, the fact that, Yes, I'm out here to do me. I haven't been eating, I haven't been sleeping, and it did kind of show because he does kind of look a bit different this season. I hope we get to see a lot more of Mother Smoke for what we get, but compared to his leadership in this season anyway, it's more reminding me of season two and how with Butcher weak at his hand, he can actually be the one to step up in the, within the group. Kimiko and Frenchie, I feel like their storyline for right now, it's nothing compared to what the big things are because... Frenchie, he's on his own path where it kind of reminds me of that storyline from Falcon and Winter Soldier where Frenchie gets a boyfriend and he realizes later on and finding out that his boyfriend is actually a victim because he killed his entire family and he doesn't want to reveal to him just yet. And Kimiko is on her own thing with that. She, I got to talk about episode two first before I get to it. Kimiko's story is that for right now in this case that she's going through speech therapy and you see that in episode two when they're at that whole redneck conspiracy theory con that she's looking at a picture of herself and that there are other kids out there because you got to remember she wasn't the only one experimenting on with compound v and there are other kids out there like her brother but we haven't seen anybody or any other people with actual powers out there episode two is one of the i guess one of the grossest episodes we've seen this season or within the show in general because we actually get to go to a whole conspiracy con and where we're introduced for our new kind of good but kind of not soup firecracker and guys hear me out on this i took a look at her i'm like okay so you're basically one of those white trash trailer park looking people who got powers and suddenly are getting endorsements from these guys at this con yes this feels like you're more of your audience but then again it's like what are your powers especially that you don't do because she doesn't shoot anybody and i feel like her powers and the way sister sage said what are your powers and i want you to join the seven and if she just shows that she just snaps her fingers it was kind of like a little spark that kind of reminds me of Jubilee from X-Men. But that fight between the whole multiple man looking dude and that guy. Oh, man. As if this show couldn't get any grosser. We actually saw a human centipede in this show. I was down for Herogasm and some of the other stuff they did. But this, I don't know why I crossed the line. Because I feel like, oh, yeah, this is that turn away at the TV looking moment. I don't know. For as nasty as the show was, I don't know. This didn't do it for me. And I'm not going to lie, I liked Herogasm, but Herogasm, the way I saw it is like, huh, I've heard about the superhero orgy and I've seen it in the comics, but looking at it in the show is like, huh, this is low-key kind of hot in the worst way. I'm like, whoa, why did I just say that? I was like, damn, I don't know, it unlocked like something in me. Out of all the episodes entirely, I can just say episode three, especially the third episode, I feel like this is my favorite episode because this episode i feel like in more in line with what the show or specifically these next two seasons have to feel like because you see huey and um 
uh, Mother's Milk on their own mission at the ice skating rink. They're trying to find a way to put a hit on Victoria. And suddenly Homelander's at the rink as they're doing their own version of Roger the Musical on ice. But I feel like this season especially has to feel like this. You see Huey and Mother's Milk planting bugs between the whole rink. And you see this one little piece that kind of reminds me of that scene in Spider-Man 1 when you see the blood go down on the floor. And you see Huey sweat go down on Homelander's shoulder. And once he smells it, he just heat lasers the fucking vents. And you see him going after Huey, chasing him. That scene, I'm like, wow. This is what Superman or anybody would be in a situation like this. That little sense of fear. You know you have powers. You can see him. But weirdly enough, I don't know how. Because I kind of did explain it last season. And I guess a couple times. Homelander can see through walls. But he just lasers the fucking vent. And he looks inside the vent and he doesn't look anywhere to find Huey. So he's rummaging around trying to find him, smell him, at least try to get closer to him. He gets to the exit, but he doesn't see exactly where he went. I don't know. If I have a little plot point, I'm like, huh, if you could look through things, how come you didn't just x-ray the whole thing and just find him right then and there? And it's not until A-Train comes over Huey and saves him because A-Train, I feel like out of all the characters between the seven that we've seen redemption stories for, because I feel like we knew Maeve was a good person at heart, but... Most of the time, she didn't show it as much. Black Noir, he is a good person, but he was just broken. But the A-Train, he killed Huey's girlfriend. He's done a lot that you could say, yeah, you're basically drugged out doing these things with Homelander. But he's just doing him. And same thing with last season when he tried to help his community with um gunpowder. And for trying to help it paralyze his brother. So technically speaking, he's just a guy just trying to do the right thing and at least this season and anyway i feel like we're actually getting to the redemption part of his story i know it happens later on than where it is now but at this point i'm like okay you actually have to help these guys out because now that you're actually joining and seeing what homelander is for what he is i feel like now you can stop being a lackey and let the deep do the most of his dirty work if there's one bad thing i can talk about this season it's black noir I don't know. He's my favorite character. I'm going to be honest. Out of everybody in the seven, I found him. I'm like, oh, I can like him. He doesn't do much, but I'm like, every time you see him on screen, you can't wait to see what he does next. He's one of the coolest characters. And the fact that it's like some random dude. And fun fact, I learned that it's the same actor who plays Black Noir, but he, he's finally getting a chance to voice Black Noir and actually be him an actor playing Black Noir. I find that funny for what it is, but I'm like, you're not that same guy. Like, Every time I see you, you're not intimidating. You're just out there almost like Vigilante from Peacemaker. But it's like, I want to see you do something cool. I want to see you just, I don't know, kill somebody. Maybe play the piano. Or maybe get a nut allergy once in a while. I don't know. This is all I can talk about so far. I know we haven't gotten to that much. I haven't talked about certain little plot points. But what I can talk about is the very end of this episode, which I feel like we're going to get the origin story of Homelander this time. Because I know we've seen it sort of in the boys' diabolical animated series. Where they showed that one episode of how Homelander on his first day on the job actually doing his thing. But the way the episode caps off, you see Homelander yell at Ryan that he's not good enough for him. And so you see him do the same scene like in season three, talking to himself in the mirror. And you see all four different personalities talking to Homelander at once. And you tell him, they all tell him to go back to the beginning. And you see the door, which was the door that was in the Vought lab that he was actually raised in underground. And I guess that's where the season ends off, or should I say the episode caps off, and I'm like, oh, so we're going to see more next episode, and this should have been a binge season, because that's what it actually felt like. All three of these episodes felt in line with each other, and they were more, they were not fast-paced, they just have a lot going, which I'm like, okay, I want to see what happens next, I want to see what happens next. But for these three episodes, or I guess I can say for the beginning of season four, I don't know if it's going to have that same feeling as I go throughout these reviews. But I feel like season four in particular is in line with the actual boys comic and the tone, everything is set aside. It's its own personal thing. We know where the story's going and all these characters are basically the characters, the way I saw them in the boys comic. Yes, there are a bit of few differences between character stories and archetypes from what they are, but the way the boys are represented in this season anyway is more in line with what they look like in the comic. And I can just say for where the story is going right now, Hopefully, the season ends up with one scene. I feel like, okay, if you're going to end season four with this and save one more season for the grand finale, it has to end with one specific shot, which I'm like, okay, if the show does it, cool. But if it doesn't, hopefully, they can save that for the maybe beginning of next season. All right, you guys, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Do you want to talk about the boys every other week? If not, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.